Hello, Virgo. Welcome to your 2019 six month forecast. Thank you so much for tuning in. So this is going to be a look into the first six months of 2019 for you from January to June. This is a general reading. So please take what resonates and leave what doesn't. If you would like a look into your own personal six month ahead, uh, please go ahead and email me. I do have these readings available for personal consumption. Yes, I can do six months or I could do three months if you like. I could do anything, well, pretty much anything. So anyway, um, I am going to be using for this reading the uh, major arcana of the Dreams of Gaia Tarot here. Now this, this deck is fairly new to me, even though I've had it for some time. I haven't really worked with it too much, but they were calling to be a part of this reading. So I am going to be using them and I'm going to be uh, reading a little bit of the book uh, in certain cir circumstances just to get a deeper understanding of certain cards. And then also I'm going to be uh, pulling some clarification for each month. So I'm going to take one card for each month for uh, January through June from the Dreams of Gaia Tarot. And then I'm going to be clarifying with the Tarot from the Crystal... Visions tarot deck. Yeah. So Virgo, without further ado, let's get to it. Hi spirit. Please make me a clear channel for all Virgos, sun, moon, rising, and Venus. Please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved. Please give us an accurate representations for the first half of 2019 for Virgo, January through June. Thank you so much, Spirit. Okay, Virgo, let's see what we've got for you. So for January, ooh, here we go. Knowledge, all right. February. And already I'm seeing that for January, this is going to be a month of Gaining knowledge, yes, but I really feel like it's compartmentalizing it. Putting that knowledge that you've acquired over 2018, putting it into place, putting it to like, like fitting it into, uh, uh, into context potentially for you in January. For February, let's see what we have here. Ooh, ooh, abundance, okay. March, that's a beautiful card, abundance. March. The crone, all right. April, the youth, very interesting. Cancer, Leo, and now you, Virgo, are getting this card. And I believe, well, I know Leo got it in this position for April, but I think Cancer got it for April as well. That's very interesting. May, for you, Virgo. The sage, and June. Very interesting. June is union. Interesting, Virgo. My, my, my. Okay. So let's see here. Let's just get a quick overview and then I'm going to go into each one specifically. Now, knowledge is definitely about the acquisition of knowledge okay and for some of you it's also the compartmentalizing of it so it's like you've been gaining you, 2018 was probably a really eye-opening year for you and you've been gaining a lot of different uh, nuggets of information and now i feel like in january you're doing your typical virgo thing and you're putting them into order you're organizing this knowledge and through that you are then tapped into some serious abundance in february and I really feel like that abundance is coming from all of the things that you've learned that you've now put into place, okay? And then come March, you get into the crone energy, which is very independent, very wise. Um, a teacher, a healer, uh, this is a feminine energy that potentially chooses not to have children. Um, she is a very much uh, interesting she's she's a very much an energy that's off the, that is kind of is very much off the grid um off the moves or 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 travels off the beaten path and then you get into the youth uh which is again another energy of being off the off the beaten path now i feel like um with crone here this is an awakening of the divine feminine within 
which then which then works on starting to heal the divine masculine in, in within so we get to the youth and then the youth progresses from um, April into May into the sage and the sage is the counterpart of the crone so I'm seeing for the first half of the year for a lot of you Virgos there's going to be a big energy of yes the union between masculine and feminine within and it's so funny I didn't even remember what the card for June was until I started saying that and I looked and here you have it union okay so that's really that's that's really freaking cool. <laughs> All right, Virgo, let's get into some specifics here for you. So we're starting with January. Um, and I just want to, I, ju I do just want to point out that there are a lot of the same cards coming up for all of the signs here. All right. Um, lots of central themes. I mean, knowledge, the sage, the crone, the youth have all been, have been coming out for almost all the signs so far. It's really cool. But okay, so for you Virgo, like I said, um, you're, I really feel like you're putting a lot of what you've learned in the past, especially in the previous year of 2018, you're putting a lot of that into place. You're compartmentalizing. That's the word I keep hearing here for you, compartmentalizing. Putting it into place, putting it into order, organizing it, making sense of it, okay? So let's get some clarification here for you, Virgo, for your month of January, 2019. The devil, ooh. All right, you have the Page of Cups, the Knight of Wands. Underneath the deck is the Eight of Wands. So some of you, are dealing okay you have the knight of wands uh, i'm sorry the eight of wands underneath the deck there's some there's definitely an it's some energy of communication here uh potentially apologies with the page of cups and the eight of wands some of you are dealing with some pretty toxic energies some of you may be dealing with a, a capricorn specifically or a sagittarian specifically uh, especially between the Knight of Wands and the Eight of Wands. Eight of Wands is also Sagittarian energy. Um, you could also be dealing with a Pisces, Page of Cups, but it doesn't have to be any of that. Um, I really feel like a lot of you are learning about codependency or toxic energies. Some of you are stepping into some sort of spiritual warrior situation. It's like It's almost like you've gone through... Uh, um, a major awakening throughout 2018 and now in 2019 you're stepping into 2019 with a brand new awareness about life about reality about yourself that you can never really go back from i know me and a very good friend of mine um we we've been saying lately how you know we kind of wish we could just go back to sleep because at some, it did, it really, at this point, it really does feel like ignorance was bliss, even though at the time when we were slightly ignorant, I mean, I mean, speaking for myself personally, when I was in that a kind of ignorant state, you know, I, I was not happy with life. And so then I, saw, I, I sought enlightenment and I've been going on, go, working down that path. And the more I awaken to things, you know, kind of the harder it gets, but at the same time, the more beautiful it is. And I really feel like there are some of you out there that are already reaching that point. And because of that, there could be some apologies you may wanna give or that you may uh, receive. And now I'm not saying, I'm not necessarily saying it's going to happen in January, it could, it absolutely could. But there is some sort of impetus there. But at the same time, there's also uh, dreamer energy here. Okay, so now with all of the energy that all the the, the knowledge that you've acquired um, with this new, it's because it seems like you want to move in a new direction, especially with this Knight of Wands. You want to move pretty quickly. Excuse me. Um, and with the 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 devil that you seem to be leaving behind you or at least you're needing to leave behind you, it's clearing up space for you to dream of something new here, all right? So this is a beautiful energy for January for you, Virgo. So now for February, you have abundance, okay? And so, and, and what I was picking up with, and I am going to read a little bit of this card, but with abundance, it's like all the, 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 the knowledge that you have acquired 
is now allowing you to be in a much more abundant state. Seven of Swords. Just wanted to flip over there. Uh, I'm not sure you're really sharing too much of it. Um, maybe there's some... And the sun is underneath the deck. There might be... You might be dealing with a fear of a lack of abundance. You might be wanting to hide your abundance. I would caution against doing that too much. Um, you want to stay in the flow of abundance. So in order to stay in the flow of abundance, you want to share that abundance. Now, you don't have to share all willy-nilly with anyone who asks for it. You are uh, allowed to choose the, bless the best places to share your abundance, but at the same time, you don't want to hoard it all for yourself. Because that's not how being in the flow of true abundance really works. All right, so let's see here. I want to read a little bit about abundance. But I really feel like this abundance is coming through for you through what it is you have learned, all the knowledge that you've acquired. Card number 15. Oops. There we go. Abundance. Key words, abundance. Consciousness. Giving. Receiving. Energy, love, appreciation. Key phrases. Abundance is a state of plenty. Abundance is a feeling. Abundance surrounds you. Have faith and conviction. Complete trust is required. Your rainy day is today. Determine your goals and reasons and set intentions. A state of contentment not influenced by external factors. Relax and enjoy yourself. Generosity ripples outwards. The more you give, the more you receive. Appreciate and be grateful. All right. So now let's get some uh, clarification here for you. Woo! Queen of Wands. Look at that. All right. Okay, that wanted to come out. For your month of February, Virgo. Okay. So I do see, all right, underneath the deck, you have the Page of Pentacles here. So I see you really kind of embarking on something new here. Um, there's a new sense of self-love, and it could be an abundance of self-love that is causing you to walk away from some sort of situation. I feel like with all the knowledge that you gained here, and I, th I really do think this has to do with the toxicity or the codependent energies that we were, that came out in the devil for the month of January, there is a sense of self-love here that has been acquired, and now you're really able to walk away from those sorts of situations and start something new. Cardinal energy with the Queen of Wands here. This could be an Aries in your life, but this also could be you. And I really feel like this is you because you're walking away towards something new because you finally realize that you are abundant in and of yourself. You have the Nine of Swords, and look at that. There's that Seven of Swords again. Okay, so some of you are afraid of abundance. Some of you are afraid of lack of abundance. But some of you are also walking away from these fears of abundance. And also, for some of you, you're walking away from other individuals in your life. This could be family. But you're walking away from other individuals in your life that have some sort of lack of abundance mentality. And you're not really doing it in the out, out in the open. It's like you're slowly, for some of you, you're making slow and methodical steps to kind of like systematically break yourself free of that, is what I'm seeing with the Seven of Swords and the Nine of Swords here. With the Page of Cups, I'm sorry, the Page of Pentacles, you are starting something new. You are embarking on a new material journey in your life. And this really could just be the way that you are approaching abundance, okay? And the Queen of Wands energy is really an energy that I feel you accepting in and of yourself. Um, and the Queen of Wands is very much connected to the, her own abundance and the abundance, the abundance of the universe. It, she's, very, she's a very magnetic character, okay? She just allows it to come to her. And that's what you're doing in the month of February. That's pretty fantastic. Pretty fantastic, Virgo. So now let's get into the month of March. 
you have the crone. And so with this newfound abundance here, I really feel like, haha, <laughs> two of cups. All right, that's the first card that flew out here. And I, this is kind of like what I was saying here with this abundance here that, ooh, wow, six of wands. Uh, you are coming into tune with yourself. And as you get into March, the crone I really feel like is the first step towards a union between masculine and feminine within, which we see here because then after the crone, you have the youth, then the sage, which is the counterpart to the crone, and then finally union for the month of June. And so here you're starting, you're really starting a process of inner union, many of you are. It's gonna lead you to some really fantastic victory. Now, the crone is one step in, oh wow, three of cups. One step in um, moving towards um, authenticity, independence. This is someone who does things, she's very wise, uh, she's a feminine figure. She does things not because she has to, but because it's the right thing to do. Page of cups. Um, this is someone that chooses not to have children, but also this is the rise of the divine feminine. All right, and I'm really seeing uh, the divine feminine energies rising up within you and helping you transform, helping you find this union. Now this union could also lead to a union with someone else, okay? Um, but I'm really seeing that there's a lot of internal work that you're doing over the first six months of this year. And the Three of Cups, again, is another union card, but this is mind, body, and spirit here. And as the Divine Feminine rises, it gives way for the divine fem or for the mind, body, and the spirit to come together within you. I do want to read a little bit of the crone here. Keywords. Feminine power. Fearlessness. Authenticity. Individuality independence, new purpose, freedom, the shadow self. Key phrases, the woman who understands her true nature. Be aware of your choices. Be unafraid to walk your path alone. A life of your own design. Untapped power and potential. Fertile and productive future. A childless state. Be unbowed and unapologetic. Respect and cherish your elders. A direct and forthright approach is needed. Do what's necessary, not what's expected. It is time to be fierce and to fight back, which is exactly what the divine feminine energies are doing right now. Um, and this is going to be victory, victorious. Again, this is, this is bringing the union within, okay? This is like the very start for many of you. For a lot of you, you've already started to go through this, but for the most part, this is where it's really starting to take hold for many of the Virgos out there. Page of Cups. Page of Cups is the dreamer energy. Reconciliation. I am hearing some sorries here, some apologies, but that's not a huge thing. So then we move into April and you have the youth here. Ugh. Well, death wanted to come out. So you could be dealing with some sort of Scorpio energy. There could be Scorpio in your chart. You could be dealing with another Scorpio, but also this is transformation. And this is transformation in the form, wow, the magician. There you go. This is transformation in the form of transforming the masculine energies within. Um, I really feel like you've gotten in touch with the feminine energies and now that's allowing the masculine energies to rise up and to uh, ascend even more. I'm seeing, I'm seeing inner child healing with the youth here. The youth is a very independent uh, uh, figure. Um, he is another one of those energies that doesn't really do something because it's expected of him or because he has to. He does it because it serves his purposes. It, uh, it feeds his desires. The youth can be pretty selfish, but he also can be very committed to the cause if it resonates with him, if it helps him get where he's trying to go, if it helps serves his own purposes. Um, he would be a very, very good ally to have, very faithful, uh, very... Uh, committed, um, strong-willed, you know, willing to do the work. So from the rise of the Divine Feminine, then we have the rise of the Divine Masculine, but this is the rise of the Divine Masculine in the sense of um, in alignment, not twisted masculinity. Let's get some clarification here for this one for the youth, 
for Virgo, um, April of 2019, please, Spirit. Okay, I'm going to do one more pass. Underneath the deck so far, we have the Two of Wands. So there could be some sort of decision that needs to be made. Ace of Cups, self-love. This is divine love. Yes, from this nurturance that the crone is providing, the rise of the divine fem masculine can happen. Page of Swords, Two of Pentacles. And it looks like the Page of Swords is in reverse. So it's an ending of a cycle of learning. Um, it's the ending of seeking, and it's, it's now the beginning of putting everything into greater balance. You do have the King of Pentacles underneath the deck here. And then you have the Ten of Cups. I mean, that's beautiful. There is a sense of ultimate fulfillment that's going to come through for you as you balance these energies out, okay? As you bring them into greater balance throughout the month of April. And it's, going, and, and it's going to help you really mature. Really mature. And I see this happening pretty quickly. I mean, you're going from the youth, which is like the young man, to the grown man in the King of Pentacles. Well manifested, solid, stable, secure, um, grounded. Either financially secure or, or well on their way to being financially secure. And all of this comes from this divine love here. Okay? I mean, that's quite fantastic with the Ace of Cups. And then the Ten of Cups, you're leading yourself towards ultimate fulfillment. Maybe even a family life. And like I said, the youth is a very committed figure. Okay? And the King of Pentacles definitely talks about commitment in some cases. Right? So now we move on to May, and you have... The sage. So the sage is the energy of a very wise teacher, uh, a communicator, someone that, that speaks truth, that shares their story. Again, walks, oops, hold on, wait, we have a card that flipped over. Walks his own path and is very happy to have people join them, but it's not like he's join him, but it's not like there's, he's seeking people to join him. The empress flipped over. Okay, so abundance and fertility here. Oh, and as and I'm getting an energy, a message here uh, between the youth and the King of Pentacles. That progression, it's allowing the masculine energies within you to to flourish and to grow into who they truly are. Not really trying to shape them, other than keeping them in alignment. Okay, but being allowing the masculine within you to be who and what it truly is. And not trying to make it into something that you want it to be. I mean, it's already you. Just allow yourself to be you. You know what I mean? And I'm also getting that this could be translating to some of your children. If you have young boys in your life, the more you work on the divine feminine within you, the more you heal your own divine masculine within, you allow younger generations of masculine energies to flourish in that way. So that's kind of beautiful, all right? So now we get into the month of May and you have the sage. This is someone that, uh, again, walks off the beaten path. Um, this is very much similar to the hermit in the traditional major arcana of the tarot. This is someone that's very wise, um, very knowing, very loving, um, uh, is not afraid of the truth, is not afraid to speak the truth, is not afraid to tell their story. But also is not, it's not an energy of um, providing unsolicited advice either. Like the sage knows when, when to uh, share their knowledge and when not to, right? And this is also the counterpart to the crone. So here you have the progression of from the youth to the king of pentacles and now the wise sage. Very old soul type energy, yes? So I'm going to shuffle one more time and then we'll get some clarification for you. Whoops. Let's try that again.
All right. So let's see what we have for the month of May for you, Virgo. Sage. The Sage, excuse me. The Knight of Cups in reverse. Okay. The Knight of Swords, upright. Very interesting. All right. And then we have the Seven of Wands. Okay, so um, I really see there's no real love offers. Nine of Cups. So you're keeping to yourself, I want to say, in the month of May. Uh, because there's really, a, I'm hearing there's a serious integration that's happening in service of your dreams, your Nine of Cups here. But there is definitely communication that's going to be had, and but there are going to be boundaries put in place. Love is on hold during the month of May. But communication is not. Sharing of stories, sharings of experiences. And actually, I'm really feeling like that's really going to help you with your own integration process because it's going to help you process a lot of what you've gone through up until this point. Because you're preparing yourself for some sort of union, which is to come in June. And it's wish fulfillment of some sort, okay? Okay, so great. So now let's, let's see what, we, what, what Union has to say for June here for you, Virgo. Um, I do want to read a little bit of that card from the book. We have the Queen of Pentacles and we have Judgment. So Queen of Pentacles could symbolize you, Virgo. It also could symbolize, uh, technically it's uh, Capricorn energy, um, but it could symbolize you. It could symbolize another Virgo in your life. It could symbolize a Capricorn or a Taurus in your life. Um, but this is, uh, but then with judgment also, I really feel like there's some sort of, for some of you, what I'm getting there is there's a counterpart here. Ten of Wands though. There are burdens that are standing in the way of that. Yeah, look at that. The Ten of Wands just came out. But now it's coming out and it's falling out almost reversed. So I really feel like, um, you know, this union energy that's coming forward towards you is helping you release a lot of burdens um, that are keeping you from this union. This is card number 13. It's 23. So for some of you, you're needing to release burdens, but it's the act of bringing yourself into union that is helping you release these burdens by default, to be quite honest. So instead of really having to do anything extra, all you need to do is to continue to work on this union within. Keywords, wholeness, marriage, unity, connection, integration, harmony, alignment, peace. Key phrases, unity and wholeness. Harmony arises when we are in alignment. You have unlimited potential, a path that marries science and spirituality. Duality creates separation, the marriage of mind, body, and soul. All is connected, complete self-acceptance. Do not dominate or be submissive. At the center is the void. You are a temple, worship within, fear and need, cornerstones of dependency. So there are definite marriage vibes here coming out for you. Some of you, this could be a physical marriage with a counterpart. Um, I did see the Queen of Pentacles come out um, and we were talking about the King of Pentacles before <clears throat> for the month of April. Um, so some of you are stepping into your King of Pentacles energy. Some of you are attracting a king of pentacles or some of you are attracting a queen of pentacles. However, that resonates for you. And so because of that, there could be a union. Now you could, there could be a proposal in June. I apologize if I'm ruining any plans, but there could be a proposal in June. There could be um, someone you could meet a counterpart of which who could turn into you know, a, uh, a marriage partner later on down the road. I feel like it's something, it looked like something was flipped over. Give me a second here, guys. Um, but also, this is definitely the union, union within. Okay, no, we're good. This is definitely union within, uh, mind, body, and spirit, masculine and feminine energies within. Like, this is a major thing for a lot of you. 
in the first half of 2019. This is beautiful. All right, one more shuffle. And let's get some clarification here for you, Virgo, for the month of June 2019. Seven of Pentacles. Eight of Swords in reverse. Uh-oh. <laughs> There's the Ten of Wands again. We also have Judgment. Yes. Resurrection. Rebirth. Underneath the deck. Wow. Underneath the deck is the Hierophant. So there really could be some sort of progression of commitment. There could be a marriage proposal in the month of June for you. Uh, we have the Eight of Swords in Reverse, we have the Seven of Pentacles, the Ten of Wands, Judgment, and the Six of Swords in Reverse. Okay. So some of you, uh, again, I'm hearing off the beaten path. Some of you have learned a serious, serious lesson by, by this time, by June, okay? And you're not moving in the same direction that you were in the past between the Seven of Pentacles and the Six of Swords. The Six of Swords is in reverse. And with the Eight of Swords in reverse, you're cutting yourself out of a mental prison, a prison that you may have found yourself in for a prolonged amount of time. And that's coming as a natural byproduct, <laughs> if you wanna call it that, <laughs> of this union energy here, okay? And so with the Ten of Wands, which just keeps coming out for this period of time for you, there is a release. There is redemption here. There is a release of burdens, of maybe responsibilities that no longer resonate with you. But with judgment, there is a resurrection here, a rebirth. And with the Hierophant, you're either listening to your higher self more, is something that I just heard, or you are coming into union with yourself. Or you're coming into union with someone else, someone external from you, maybe some sort of counterpart. But that's quite beautiful. Virgo. So there you have it. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope this was helpful for you. And I definitely look forward to connecting with you guys again soon in the very near future. Um, if you would like one of these readings for yourself, please don't hesitate to send me an email. I can do a six month uh, overview. I could do a 12 month overview. No, no, 12 is a bit much. Um, not 12, three month overview. Um, but yeah, go ahead and send me an email and I will get that all set up for you, okay? I wish you guys all the best for the first half of 2019. Take care, much love, and I look forward to connecting with you soon. Mwah! Bye!